Welcome to the MSI channel where I try to resurrect an old MSI 8080 computer. Okay, I got something in the mail and uh, I saw these on eBay and uh, I think if you go around the S100 crowd too you'll uh, you'll find uh, things by uh, Don Coprio. This was done in 2015 and it's just a little card uh, for the S100 um, that allows you to hook up uh, oscilloscopes or logic probes and stuff like that. It brings all the pins out to uh, 100 pins uh, connectors, um, 100, 100 uh, uh, thousandths connectors, and uh, has some LEDs on it to um, make sure your power supplies are working. Uh, and even gives a little, uh, uh, there's a 5 volt regulator here, so if you have a, a logic probe um, that requires 5 volts, you can, you can connect it over here. And uh, the kit comes with some parts. Um, let's see, what do we get? Oops. We get uh, there uh, the three LEDs. Uh, we get the little five volt regulator, which goes over there, and uh, a couple uh, couple connectors uh, for these here. Uh, what you don't uh, what you don't get is the uh, uh, the hundred pin. Um, other connectors, um, not 100 pin, but you know these things, um, 100,000 spacing, point, point 0.1 inch spacing. But I've got a whole bunch of these, so um, I think I'll, I'll populate all of those uh, that allow me to easily put in my uh, logic analyzer or clip a clip a scope to it. So uh, let me put it together and we'll we'll try it out. All right, turned out really good. Uh, the uh, spacing of these connectors is mm, it's okay um, it allows you to put uh, uh, another female uh, socket on it and then there's room between for the two sockets to meet um, some people might think that they should all be on 100 centers but um, but I think it's fine the way it is and I think we should uh, should give it a try. Everything's labeled really nice, um, and it's grouped logically, which is, uh, I think, what they were after. Uh, the address line zero to uh, twenty-three um, actually was more address lines than the uh, eighty eighty could actually handle, and then uh, the data output and the data input are on separate connectors, um, and then a bunch of the logic um, handshaking signals are grouped. Uh, you know, in some some fashion, uh, I think I think it makes sense. So why don't we take it inside and plug it on to the uh, MSI and see if the LEDs light up? All right. So we're out of the way. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> so I have uh, the uh, extender cord already in there, so I'll just plug it into that. I don't think it's probably not very useful going to the actual bus itself. Uh, it would be way down in there, it would be hard to get to, so you almost have to have an extension card to use this. Um, let's turn it on. Oh, LEDs, yay. Everybody likes LEDs. So we have uh, uh, plus or minus 16, plus 8, and uh, everything else is good to go. So. Measure our five volt, our little five volt regulator over there, and see if it's working. Here's ground. Five volts. Okay. Looks good. Maybe we should uh, hook up a logic analyzer and uh, uh, see if we can't uh, probe some of the signals while the uh, M side is running. We can see them on the front panel, but um, I think some of the timing signals and stuff you get a better understanding if you've seen it on a uh, on that logic analyzer. Okay, uh, I have this little uh, uh, logic as, uh, analyzer uh, and we will, it's a USB 16, uh, 16 channel, uh, 100, 100 megahertz. Plenty fast for this. Uh, so I've hooked up uh, the 8 data out, I think. Yeah, these are the data out lines, and a couple of control signals. 
Um, I'm going to look at uh, M1, which is the memory si uh, fetch cycle. And I'm also going to look at uh, S input and S output. So um, I think what we, what I wanted to do is we'll try a, an input um, and an output instruction uh, like we always do on the front panel. We read and then we write. And we can look to see if the signals correspond to what we expect from the front panel. And, uh, yeah, try that. Okay. I have the uh, logic analyzer set up here. And uh, we are looking at the um, data out lines, uh, D0 through D7. And we're looking at the memory fetch cycle. And then the uh, input request and output request. Okay. So this is a little hard to read, but we need to look at the bits on these uh, these eight bits. All right. So let's start uh, about um, here. Okay. And uh, if you can follow the cursor, I'm going to read the value here. It's a high, high, and then we have a low, and we have a high, high. And then we have a low. Ignore those horizontal lines, right? Um, just look at where the, the arrow is pointing. So we have high, high, low, high, high, low, high, high. So those are our data lines. One, one, zero, one, one, zero, one, one. So that is an input instruction. Remember the three, three, three in octal um, is a one, one, zero, one, one, zero, one, one. So in the memory fetch cycle, it's grabbing an opcode, and the opcode that it's grabbing is an input. And then the next cycle, which will be right in here, it's one, 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 one. So it's doing an input from FF, and then it's requesting an input cycle, right? And then that's uh, going to be one 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 now the problem with this is we're only looking at data out there's also data in on the s100 bus so this is invalid it just floats high right so we're going to assume that it pulled in some data and then it's going to do another opcode instruction it's going to pull in an opcode in the m1 cycle it's going to pull in one one zero zero one zero one one that's a 323 instruction in octal. That's the output instruction, followed by 11111, followed by FF. And then it's going to be doing an output. So it's output into the bus. 11111111. Um, OK. So then let's change the switch settings. I'm going to change the switch settings, and we'll see if they correspond. We'll do another read from the analyzer. And now when we do the uh, input cycle and the output cycle, here's the output value. Um, let's see here. Am I doing this right? Oh, no. This is the uh, output instruction. Um, input. Output instruction is one one zero zero one zero one. So here's the output to FF, and then this is the read. So it's zero zero one 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 one. Hmm. Well, that didn't work, did it? Um, I wonder if I'm looking at the wrong address line. Certainly, we're getting the uh, the opcode fetches correctly. Um, we may need to look at the other data lines. Um, anyway, let's keep going a bit. We're going to do another fetch here, and this fetch is one one zero 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 one one. So this is the three zero three instruction. This is jump, and then the next two are all zeros and all zeros. So we're going to do a jump to zero zero, and then we're going to repeat. So uh, at least we're looking at all of the opcodes. We're not looking at the actual data transfer yet. Um, always seems to be high. So we need to take a look at that. But anyway, you get the idea of how you can use um, use this little card to hook up your logic analyzer and look at different signals and stuff. And uh, yeah.
it's uh it's pretty handy um you do need an extender card uh to use it effectively and um you do need to um it doesn't come with all of the parts that you need you need to uh, get those uh single in line uh, uh connectors but those are super super cheap these days i mean i think i buy 40 at a time um, for just a couple bucks so that's that's no problem it is a very high quality card though it's uh, all gold bladed and uh, very nicely made so hand uh, hats off to uh, don caprio